Hi there, Tor Lacey here with a lecture about deserts and desert landforms. For this lecture, these are some of our learning objectives. Warm deserts are generally located near the tropics, where the angle of incidence of the sun's energy is low. The angle of incidence is the angle between a line perpendicular to Earth's surface and incoming energy from the sun. When the sun is directly overhead, the angle of incidence is zero, and the sun's energy is concentrated in a smaller area. This happens between the tropics. In contrast, the sun is never high in the sky near the poles, so there is a large angle of incidence, meaning the sun's rays arrive at a low angle to Earth's surface and are spread over a larger area. Think of how your shadow gets longer as the sun gets lower in the sky. Consequently, the sun's energy is not as intense. Deserts also occur where large-scale atmospheric circulation causes descending air, which warms as it sinks back to Earth's surface, inhibiting cloud formation and in turn rainfall. Descending air happens near the Tropic of Cancer and Tropic of Capricorn and in the rain shadow of mountains. Rain shadow deserts happen where mountains block moisture from the oceans. As moist air is carried inland, by onshore winds, mountains force the air upwards. As it rises, it expands and cools. Cool air can't hold as much moisture as warm air, so condensation happens, making clouds that yield precipitation on the windward side of the mountains. As the dry air descends the leeward side of the mountains, it contracts and warms, resulting in arid conditions such as those found in the southwestern U.S. Wind erosion is more important in deserts than in other biomes because the lack of vegetation and moisture makes it easier for wind to pick up and remove sediment and soil. However, streams are still the most important sculptors of the landscapes in Earth's arid regions. These streams are typically ephemeral or intermittent, meaning they only contain water immediately after rain. Rain events are infrequent but can be intense with several inches falling during short-lived thunderstorms. This results in large volumes of water running off the nearly barren and impermeable bedrock into dry stream channels, commonly called arroyos or washes. This can cause potentially deadly flash floods, where an arroyo goes from being bone dry to carrying a turbulent flood of water and sediment. These geologically destructive events help erode the steep-sided canyons, characteristic of many desert landscapes, and deliver sediment to alluvial fans. Speaking of which, Let's talk desert landforms. Alluvial fans are depositional landforms found in arid regions where mountains are growing by tectonic uplift, as is the case throughout the southwestern U.S. They form where a straight stream exits its steep, narrow mountain channel and flows out onto the open, relatively flat valley floor. This causes stream flow to abruptly slow and deposit its load of sediment. Because of the climate, this commonly happens during seasonal flash flood events when pulses of sediment are transported and deposited, constructing a fan-shaped pile of alluvium as the position of the stream channel shifts laterally from side to side along the mountain front. This is an alluvial fan on a topographic map. Cuestas are tilted blocks of bedrock with a steeper and less steep side. The less steep side is the top bed in a stack of strata or layered rock and is called the dip slope. The scarp slope will typically be steeper because it cuts across beds of strata, allowing it to hold a steeper slope. Playas are dry lake beds and can be some of the flattest places on earth. Therefore, some like the Bonneville salt flats in Utah have been the location for setting land speed records. Sand dunes are the most prominent landforms constructed by wind deposition. Like sediment deposited in stream channels, sand on sand dunes will continue to move so long as there is wind and a lack of vegetation to anchor the sediment. Sand grains roll and skip up the windward side, wind facing side of the dune, and are redeposited on the leeward side of the dune. This forms cross bedding a characteristic of wind deposit sediment. When the leeward side exceeds the angle of repose for sand, it fails as a sand slump. 
different types of dunes form based on the availability of sand and the direction or directions of wind. The Great Basin Desert is the largest of four deserts in North America. It's located in the rain shadow of several mountain ranges, including the Sierra Nevada Mountains here in California. Due to the combination of its geologic history and its climate, it shows the different stages of desert landscape evolution and provides excellent examples of typical desert landforms. Over the past 16 million years or so, this region has experienced intense crustal extension as tensional tectonic stresses have stretched the crust to about twice its original width. This has resulted in the formation of a repeated series of wide valleys, also called basins, separated by mountain ranges, giving this desert its geologic name, Basin and Range. The landscape of deserts evolves over time according to the constructive geologic processes of tectonic uplift and destructive processes like weathering and erosion. During the early stages, mountains are being uplifted and alluvial fans develop. Through stage two, uplift slows, mountains are lowered and look more subdued, and alluvial fans grow large enough to merge together to form bajadas. In stage three, mountains have been worn down to inselbergs, surrounded by a sea of their own sediment. Relatively flat bedrock pediment surfaces are all that remain of the ancient mountains. This brings us to the end of this lecture. Thank you for listening.